In this video tutorial, I'll be explaining how I created the neural network projection models in Fantasy Analyst and how to use them so that you can get better baseline projections in DFS. For Fantasy Analyst, I wanted to provide users not only projection values, but actual projection models that are trained and backtested over data using machine learning. So in a separate piece of software called MATLAB, I train models for each DFS site and sport using a technique called neural network regression to predict players' fantasy points based on different input variables. These models are currently built into Fantasy Analyst. In this video, I'll cover the basics of what you need to know about how I created these models and how you can use them. As an example, I'll go over how I created the model for NBA on DraftKings. When discussing the idea of how to create projection models for DFS, many people describe methods that involve creating and tuning these models by hand. The problem with this is that hand-tuned models like these can potentially be inaccurate, especially if not back-tested properly. However, there are better options available that make the task of creating DFS projection models significantly easier and more accurate. Specifically, machine learning techniques such as neural networks can easily take in lots of data and find an accurate way to predict the outputs we want automatically without much hand-tuning. Machine learning and neural networks may sound like intimidating topics, but I'll show you in this video that the process of actually using some of these algorithms to create a model can be fairly straightforward when you have the data and the right tools. I want to start with a brief introduction on how we can use a neural network to create projections for DFS. Don't worry if you don't have a degree in computer science. I'll try to keep this simple enough so that anyone can follow along. If you're unfamiliar with this, a neural network may sound like something crazy and complicated, but we can just think of this as a technique that we can use for creating a model that fits data. There are many other machine learning algorithms out there besides neural networks that have their own pros and cons for fitting data, and this is just one option. In this video, I'm only going to explain how we can use neural networks, but I won't go into how they actually work. If you're interested in learning more about them, just Google something like neural network tutorial, and you'll find more information. For our purposes, though, you can simply think of the neural network as a black box that will train with past data to make it predict an output we want. To do this, we need to go through three steps. First, we need to decide what our inputs and outputs for the model will be. Our inputs can include things such as the average fantasy points a player has previously scored, the Vegas lines for the game, weather conditions, and any other stats that we want. Our output is what we want to predict, which is usually going to be projected fantasy points. Next, we collect training data and train the neural network on it. Here, we'll give the neural network the fantasy points that were actually scored so that it can figure out a good way to combine the inputs we give it to make accurate projections. Finally, we need to test the trained neural network over a separate set of data and measure the accuracy. When we do this, we look at what projections the neural network gives us without it knowing what the final fantasy points scored are. If you've ever tried fitting a line to data in Excel, the idea here with the neural network is similar. However, the neural network allows us to use multiple input variables and the output doesn't have to be linear, allowing us to potentially get better predictions. With enough training data, a neural network can learn complex relationships between the different input variables and figure out how much importance to assign to each. For fantasy analysts, I use the process I described on the last slide to train neural network projection models for each site and sport through a separate piece of software called MATLAB. If you've never heard of it, MATLAB is a software tool that's widely used in engineering and other fields for many applications such as statistics. It has some similarities with R if you know what that is. I'm now going to open up MATLAB and show you how I trained the DraftKings NBA model I created for Fantasy Analyst. I'm going to be pulling up some code here, but again, don't be intimidated if you don't know this stuff. I'll go through the script step by step and explain everything at a high level so that you don't need to understand the code itself. Looking at the beginning of the script, the first step that I'm doing here is just loading in NBA statistics. A data table comes out of this that has the stats we want for individual players on a per game basis. There's also a table on information for the games themselves that includes things such as the Vegas lines. In the next part here, I'm just organizing and cleaning the data a bit. This includes things like removing entries for players that didn't log any minutes and setting the fantasy point scoring system for DraftKings. Once the data is ready, 
I now call this function consolidate NBA data neural net. This function looks over all of the player game results for a time frame that I select and organizes the input and output variables that I chose. If we quickly take a look in this function, the input variables I'm currently using for NBA are as follows. Average minutes over the past 20 games and past 5 games. Average points per minute over the past 20 and past 5 games. Whether a player is starting or not in the current game. And the projected team and opponent's total score for the current game based on the Vegas lines. For the output variable, I set this to the fantasy points that this player finally scored over the game on DraftKings. Going back to the main script, you can see that I'm calling this function twice. First, I collect the training data which is going to be the set I use for training the neural network. I'm only using data from last November for this part. Then, I collect the back testing data over last December. This is the data that I'll use to test the neural network against after it's been trained. The important part here is that the training and testing data sets are completely separate, because if we both trained and tested the neural network over the same data, we might see better accuracy than what might actually be possible. The next step is now to train the neural network. As you can see here, it's actually pretty simple to do because MATLAB already has the algorithms for doing this built in. All I need to do is provide it our training input and output data, and then start the training. Finally, we can now generate projections from the trained neural network with the test data and measure how accurate they are. To get a better idea of how well the neural network does, I also compare it against just using the player's average fantasy points scored over the past 20 games, as well as the third-party projections from fantasy data over the same time frame. Let me run this script now to start training the neural network. I'll speed this up so that we don't have to wait. The script has now finished and we have our trained model for DraftKings NBA projections. So let's take a look at what the final results were. For an accuracy metric, I'm currently displaying the root mean square error of the projections. For this metric, a lower value means better projections. As you can see, the neural network achieved an RMSE of 9.06. If we were to create our projections only based on average fantasy points scored, we get an RMSE of 9.31. And if we look at fantasy data's projections over the same time frame, we get an RMSE of 9.26. So from these results, the neural network clearly looks like it's performing the best out of the three options. Keep in mind that we're only measuring the accuracy of the neural network over the test data, which wasn't used in the training process. From here, the rest of the MATLAB script trains the neural network for FanDuel and Yahoo, in the same way that I just showed before for DraftKings. You may now be wondering, why not feed a lot more stats into the neural network as inputs? More information should make the model more accurate, right? Unfortunately, this isn't the case for a couple of reasons. First, if we give our neural network input variables that don't have a significant correlation with our output, our accuracy will degrade. This is because although the neural network will learn to give less weight to non-important variables, it may not give them a weight that's small enough, effectively creating more noise in the output. In addition, a lot of variables that have strong correlations with our output may already have strong correlations with other variables we are providing as inputs. For example, if we're already providing a points per minute input, adding an average fantasy points scored input is not going to give us much more information, because those two inputs will obviously have a very strong correlation with each other anyway. I chose the inputs I currently have for the NBA model by playing around with a wide range of possible variables and finding what gave the best performance with a manageable number of inputs. A lot of factors that you might think would improve the accuracy significantly didn't appear to do so in practice. To quickly demonstrate this, let's go back to the script and add an input for whether a player's game is home or away. A lot of people claim home court advantage exists for various reasons, such as players being able to get more rest when at home. So intuitively, you might think that adding this in the model should increase its accuracy significantly. I've just pulled MATLAB back up, so I'll add an eighth input to the model that gives us home or away status for each player's game. Let's rerun the script now and see how we do with this new input factored in. As you can see, the model has barely improved. We previously had a root mean squared error of about 9.06, so the accuracy improvement here is negligible. If home or away status actually had more significance in predicting a player's fantasy points, the neural network would have been able to figure out how to use it to get more accurate predictions. However, the results here show us that it's not an important factor. 
for the sake of experimenting, let's see how well our model could do if we could provide a perfect estimates of player minutes for each game. I'll just replace the home or away status input with this and rerun the script. Now that the script has finished, notice that we gained an incredible improvement in our accuracy. We're now down from 9.06 to about 6.7. As this illustrates, focusing on projecting minutes accurately is very important for NBA DFS. This is why factoring in any news that might give us clues on which players get more or less minutes before a game is crucial for success. Let's go to Fantasy Analyst now and see how we can use the neural network models. First, make sure you have already downloaded at least a season's worth of past historical stats. If you haven't done this yet, you can download the data using the database manager. Next, make sure you've selected the sport, site, date, and slate that you want. After you're ready, all you need to do is click the Generate Neural Network Projections button, and the software will automatically begin calculating the appropriate inputs for all players that are checked based on their previous stats. The final projections from the neural network are shown in the neural net proj column in light blue. Editable inputs for the model are shown in yellow. Although most of the input values are calculated automatically when you click the generate button, you can change them as you wish. For example, let's say we find out that a particular player is going to be starting. All we have to do is go to the starting column and change the value appropriately. You can see that the neural network has now increased its projection for this player. For Vegas lines, you can easily update these for all players by changing the values in the game information window. If you want to use the neural network projections, the easiest way to do this is to select the players you want to use them for, right click, and then select Use Neural Network Projections. This takes the neural network projection and sets it in the projected points column as the projection value to use for the lineup optimization. As you saw in this video, the neural network models can give us good baseline projections that can do significantly better than making projections based only on a player's average past score. Keep in mind that when using the neural network projections, these are only based on historical data and they are not factoring in things such as news updates on player injuries by default. When using them, it's important to adjust the inputs accordingly depending on any news that is available. For example, when using the NBA models, make sure that the starting players are correctly set. You can edit other inputs to the model as well. For example, if you have a particular estimate for the minutes a player is going to see, you can simply enter that value in the average minutes columns to update your projection. Finally, don't forget that Fantasy Analyst easily allows you to save projections and measure their historical accuracies, so remember to use this functionality. I've loaded the trained models into Fantasy Analyst for all sites and sports that are currently included. For some sports, there are separate models depending on what the player position is. For example, NFL uses separate models between players and defenses, and MLB uses separate models between pitchers and hitters. I'll soon be putting up a written guide for Fantasy Analyst on the website that will go through in more detail all of the parameters for these models, what time frames they were trained over, and their accuracies over test periods, so keep an eye out for this.